Well, we've documented the troubles with San Francisco's Millennium Tower, sinking and leaning for years. But that's not the only building that's sinking in the Bay Area. Our investigative reporter, Jackson Vanderbecken, tells us the timing is less than ideal because the sea level is rising at the same time. I looked at every building in the Bay Area, so just under a million buildings. Tom Parsons is a research geophysicist with the U.S. Geological Survey, the USGS. He studies how seismic stresses build up on the Earth's crust. And lately, he's studying the phenomenon of sinking cities. Turns out the entire Bay Area has sunk as much as three inches on average during the last century. The cause? An extra 3.5 trillion pounds of concrete and steel and everything else that goes with seven to eight million people living here. Clearly the, the most dense and the tallest buildings are centered in that downtown San Francisco area and that's where we see the most calculated cumulative settlement from all of those buildings together. Downtown of course is home to the infamous Millennium Tower. It's perhaps the single most recognizable tilting building in the country right now. But the Millennium has a lot of company. Take a look at the 10 heaviest buildings in San Francisco that exert the most pressure on the earth. At 686 million pounds, Millennium is just the third heaviest development. The top nine all weigh more than 300 million pounds. But Parsons' data suggests they're all sinking, slowly but evenly. So none of the others is leaning like the Millennium, which is sinking primarily on one side. The Millennium Tower is an unusual example of tilt, but um, Generally, they go down vertically. The European Space Agency's Sentinel-1 satellite actually captured the phenomenon from space. You could see the financial district and other downtown areas show up in yellow, indicating ongoing settlement. All that weight, Parsons says, is enough to influence an earthquake fault. Fortunately, the San Andreas Fault runs offshore before it reaches San Francisco. So the billions of extra pounds of development in the city is not likely to impact it. If you have a series of buildings, uh, fairly heavy buildings, all clustered together, they're going to influence each other. Harry Poulos is an internationally recognized expert on tall building foundations. He says while there may be no seismic concern for San Francisco, there's been little research about the collective impact of entire corridors of high rises on the earth below. I've been doing foundation design for, I guess, nearly 30 years now and it's not something that we've actually ever even thought about uh, not not on the sort of scale that you're talking about anything that's contributing to lowering the ground surface is something we should be worried about parsons says he's now studying manhattan because it's sinking too and faces the same threat as san francisco from climate change parsons points out ground level and sea level heading in opposite directions is a dangerous scenario for coastal cities. So if you have all of this going on when you're right near the waterline, in some cases in San Francisco, then you have to worry about big storms as sea level comes up and inundation more frequently. San Francisco building officials say they have long-term plans to protect against climate change by building up the seawall. In the meantime, they say tall buildings should be monitored for settlement for at least a decade after construction. Jackson Vanderbecken, NBC, Bay Area News.